Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Yonit Arthur. I'm an audiologist and coach. You're on The Steady Coach. And today I'm going to be answering one of your questions in this unedited video as part of the ongoing Ask Dr. Yo series of videos. And I have a whole playlist of these videos in which I answer your questions from the comment section on YouTube and other social media sources. So please check that out. It's on the main page of my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about neuroplasticity programs. What's the difference between neuroplasticity programs that you might commonly see marketed on social media and my approach that I talk about on my channel? And do you need one of these programs in order to recover from medically unexplained chronic dizziness or other symptoms? So on my channel, it's primarily people who have diagnoses of PPPD, MDDS, vestibular migraine, or who don't have a diagnosis because the doctors can't find anything wrong that explains why you have dizziness symptoms. But this also applies to those of you who have medically unexplained chronic tinnitus tinnitus, hyperacusis, pain, fatigue, etc. So I'm going to be doing my absolute best today to be fair and balanced in my assessment here. I'm going to be using words like usually and sometimes not words like always because ultimately I'm not here on my channel to tell you what to do and how you have to do things in order to recover. What I care about is that you feel empowered and that you find what works for you. So regardless of what you take away from this video, if you do choose to use a neuroplasticity program that has some of the disadvantages or advantages that I talk about in this video, I totally support you. I just want to see you get better. Now, all that being said, I'm going to start with explaining the kind of bigger picture of what my approach has in common with, again, programs often marketed as neuroplasticity or brain retraining programs. And then we're going to go into some of the glaring differences and disadvantages that I see in many of these programs. So the first thing that we have in common is probably the most important thing. There's a recognition that the brain is playing a very important role in why you have chronic symptoms. Obviously, this is the absolute basis of everything that I do, and it's also the basis of all the work that you would do in a neuroplasticity or brain retraining program, that the symptoms are reversible, they have to do with how the brain and nervous system are responding to various things, and that this is a programming error that can be undone through brain retraining or other neuroplasticity approaches. So that's one thing. The second thing, also quite related, there's an emphasis on the fact that the mind directly affects the brain. So there's a recognition that what's going on in your mind has the power to affect your brain and nervous system at a biological chemical level and produce the kinds of changes that are going to lead to relief from symptoms. So in all of these programs and of course here on my channel, we talk a lot about mind-based approaches. So dealing with thoughts in particular, that's what we all have in common. And then here on my channel and in some other programs, you'll see an emphasis on feelings and sensations as well. The In general, this kind of ties into number three, which is that in neuroplasticity or brain retraining programs and here in on my channel with my approach, there's some recognition at least that we have a single mind body symptom that the mind and body work together and that in order to help someone optimally and effectively resolve physical symptoms that may be appearing in the body we have to work with the entire system not just with the body not just through biomedical means and that we can affect biological changes by addressing psychosocial factors and that those psychosocial factors, so your thoughts, your feelings, your social context, what you've been through in your life, your stress, all those things have a direct impact on your biology. And therefore, we have to look at the whole picture. And then finally, most of these programs, including the approach that I have on my channel, 
we're all going to teach you some bottom up approaches to help you deal with the fear, the anxiety and the symptoms. Bottom up meaning body based methods like body scans, breathing, relaxation techniques, etc. Again, these to help you deal with the re very real effects that your symptoms are having on you right now. And that those are the main similarities. Now we're going to go into some of the things that might be different. And again, I'm speaking in generalizations here. This may not apply to all programs that you're seeing out there, but these are the glaring things that I see in common between many of these programs. The first one is for marketing purposes, often these programs will try to sell themselves as having some kind of secret or exclusive information that you can't get anywhere else. Uh, there's this emphasis on, on selling you something that you can't get for free anywhere else. And from my perspective, that is just predatory marketing. The reason I make everything available for free here on my channel is because these are the tools that I know of that work. And of course, a, I don't know of every tool that's out there, but I work with a very wide range of people. I collaborate with it in a very, very wide range of other practitioners who are working with unexplained symptoms like the ones that I work with. And chances are that no program out there is going to have some kind of really special exclusive tool that you can't get information on for free somewhere else on the internet. Now, the advantage of having a program, of course, is that, you know, they're making it easy for you to access and index all that information. But to imply that you can't get it anywhere else, again, is a marketing tactic. And I don't like that. I don't like it because by the time many of you get to my channel, you are desperate and you've been throwing as much money as you possibly can at the problem you're having. And I, you're vulnerable. And I don't like it when there is marketing that really targets vulnerable people who will spend any amount of money it takes, if they can, to get out of the situation that they're in based on inaccurate claims, okay? That ties into number two, which is that there's also, in many cases, kind of a fear-based approach to kind of try to get you to buy something. You know, there are, you'll see marketing messages out there or posts implying that you have nervous system dysfunction or that your nervous system is broken and needs to be fixed. Here's how to do it. it. Again, it doesn't mean that the content of these programs is necessarily bad. I just don't like it when people use fear based predatory tactics to try to reel in vulnerable people. And I know I'm being a bit of a mama bear in this video as I'm hearing myself talk, I'm like, wow. But I mean, I just, I don't like that. <laughs> and I, I don't want people to feel like they have to buy a program because otherwise they can't fix their broken nervous system. That, that is just not the, that's not just not the right thing to do. Okay. So number three is, is I think the central core thing that's different between my approach and some brain retraining programs in general. In many brain retraining and neuroplasticity programs, there's a big emphasis on manifesting what you want, on um, thinking positive, visualizing things going well, uh, not thinking or speaking negatively, etc. So these approaches logically make sense to me because of what I said at the beginning in regards to things we have in common. There's a recognition that the mind plays a powerful role in how your brain and body respond to various triggers, whether that's thoughts or internal triggers or external triggers, things on the outside. So there's this idea that, okay, this person is having a problem because he or she is thinking about things very negatively and paying tons of attention to symptoms. And we want to stop that. So we're going to make this person stop talking about symptoms or only talk about symptoms positively or only visualize things going well. And while I get the logic, I think this approach is actually quite harmful to people. Not to say it doesn't work for some people. Obviously, it does. But it doesn't line up with how I understand 
how neural circuit symptoms come to be. In many cases, many of you are here specifically because you've learned to override your own internal experiences, put aside your own needs, suppress your own feelings, and basically teach your nervous system you're never safe. <laughs> and if I were to just tell you, okay, the way out of this is to think positive and just override your negative thoughts and feelings, rather than teach you tools for how to work with those things, I'm basically telling you to do the same thing that might have gotten you here in the first place. So I think this is particularly a danger for people from two particular backgrounds, but it's not just exclusive to the two of these categories. Those of you with trauma, trauma teaches you to use strategies to avoid your feelings. So if we are now teaching you to avoid your feelings even more, <laughs> I, I'm not sure how I see that working out well for you in the long term. The second category, those of you with high anxiety and obsessive compulsive tendencies. Many of you, I've seen this happen to people, will get obsessed with the idea of thinking positive. Oh my gosh, I just had an intrusive negative thought. This means I'm messing up my recovery. And, and people will get into spirals of anxiety and despair because they can't follow what the program's telling them to do because the program's telling them to only visualize positive things and they just can't do it. Because honestly, it's humanly it's not humanly possible to only think positive when intrusive thoughts are popping into your head because there's a lot of anxiety going on in your body so especially for people who fall into those categories just thinking positive is really potentially harmful but i think for everyone coming back to what i was saying earlier benefits from gaining skills in in working with suffering the way that it's happening right now and learning to honor and work skillfully with our experiences rather than trying to just pretend they're not happening. So I think that's, again, probably my biggest beef with a lot of brain retraining approaches. Uh, the other thing is, so this is number four, but with this emphasis on thinking a certain way, feeling a certain way, only visualizing things a certain way, what often happens is if people can't succeed at that, regardless of whether they have a lot of anxiety or a history of trauma, people tend to feel a lot of shame. And shame is like throwing gasoline on a fire when your nervous system is already responding to things as dangerous. I've often said the only source of danger that you are constantly around is your own mind. And there is really no greater sense of danger than you feeling like there's something deeply horribly wrong with you that makes you incapable of doing the things that you need to do to get better. So when programs are trying to force you to do things in a very rigid or specific way, there's a higher likelihood that you're going to feel like you're the problem, that you're doing it wrong if it doesn't work for you. And there are reasons that these programs don't work for everyone, not just the things that I already outlined, but in number five, many of these programs are specifically emphasizing how you respond to symptoms. This is a very important component of the recovery process. It's a lot of what I talk about in on my channel and in my free course, but it is not all there is to it. Many of these neuroplasticity or brain retraining programs are ignoring the root cause for some people being trauma and life stress. And that means we're not only putting people in a position where all these positive visualizations and meditations aren't helping them, we're not even touching the things that are actually the problem, that are actually the things that are causing the nervous system to respond with danger mode to everything to begin with. Furthermore, and this is maybe more of a philosophical thing, so again, take it or leave it, but the way I see it, part of the process of recovering from chronic dizziness symptoms and really being healed, like really feeling like you've moved on with life and aren't sitting around scared that something's going to come back or looking back on this experience as like the worst thing that ever happened to you is 
making some kind of meaning out of it, achieving some kind of growth, some kind of post-traumatic growth from this experience. I'm not saying you have to do this, but I think that when you can grow from the experience of having medically unexplained symptoms, whatever yours are, it helps you work through the grief of the lost time and all the suffering that you've gone through. And it also helps you look at the experience as something that was valuable to you and helped you move forward in life in some way. And that takes away so much of the fear and the resentment and the other feelings you might have about having had these symptoms. You're going to hear this thread a lot in the recovery stories. Again, I never require that someone grow from this experience. I just think that it's a huge missed opportunity if we're only changing how we're responding to symptoms. You're not really getting the chance necessarily to grow as a person. So that fifth point, take it or leave it. You may not want to grow as a person. You may just want to get out of this. And in that case, for some people, it will work to change how you respond to symptoms. And in that case, brain retraining or neuroplasticity programs may be helpful for you. But for many of you, that's not the only thing. Your response to symptoms is not the only thing driving symptoms. And you you lose an opportunity here that I think is very important for people, both for recovery purposes and for you living a very, very happy life after this, a content life, a joyful, meaningful life. That's what I want for all of you. So to sum up, folks, I I really just want you to do what's best for you. I really hope that me outlining these things gives you some perspective on what may or may not be helpful for you in your recovery process. And as always, I look forward to your questions and comments on this one. We can have a discussion about your thoughts. And yeah, as always, please like, share, subscribe to my channel. These things help me reach more people who need information like this to get better from their symptoms. So everyone take care and I will see you in the next video.